Hi. Well, it's been a while since my last video. I apologize for that. I've been quite busy. I'm involved in a big engineering project right now. It's taking up a lot of my time. And I also just moved house. So between moving, sorting out my new place and cleaning up the old place and moving and so forth and the big project, I've been pretty busy. But here's my next video tutorial. So in keeping with the uh, I2C theme from my previous videos, um, I thought I'd have a look at this device here. Uh, this is called a Bosch BMP085. It's a pressure and temperature sensor. And uh, it, it uh, measures the atmospheric pressure. And so it could be used as part of a, um, a weather station, for example. Or if you're into uh, near space experiments with balloons, you could uh, put one of these in, in the balloon and use it to measure altitude. But I thought I'd have a look at this one and show you guys how to hook it up. It's a, an I squared C device, in, of course, in keeping with my theme. And so it's very easy to hook up to something like an Arduino. So here it is, uh, connected to an Arduino, or at least an Arduino uh, compatible device. And it's very easy to hook up. You just connect uh, plus 5 volts and ground, uh, and SDA and SCL. And those are the only connections you need to make to make it work. Now, uh, there's a few things you've got to watch out for. This uh, pressure sensor is a 3.3 volt device and its, uh, its data and clock lines here are not uh, 5 volt tolerant. So if you hook it up to a 5 volt device, you've got to be careful in how you use it. Uh, make sure that your uh, 5 volt circuit board does not have any pull-up resistors already connected to these two lines. Uh, if you remember from my free previous video, I explained that these two lines have to be pulled up to uh, VCC in order to uh, make the device work. Um, uh, it will work just fine if you connect it to a 5 volt device, provided that you connect your pull-up resistors to 3.3 volts and not 5 volts. And so make sure whatever board that you're connecting to um, has no resistors already on board connected to 5 volts. Um, or um, your microcontroller, some of them like the uh, AT Mega here, uh, will have built-in pull-up resistors that you can enable with software. Uh, make sure that those are not enabled as well, so that you don't have these two lines being pulled up to 5 volts, and then you could possibly damage this device. This uh, breakout board here has two pull-up resistors, I believe it's these two here, connected to the, uh, the data lines and the clock lines, um, to the 3.3 volt bus. And so it makes it quite easy to use this. Um, I'll show you the code that I've written to make this work and where I've actually... Um, I'm using the Arduino code for this and uh, the Arduino wire library and it does enable the two pull-up resistors on the two I.O. pins that, that uh, connect to the SDA and SCL. And I'll show you how to disable that so that uh, these two lines don't get pulled up to 5 volts. Now, before I have a look at the software, I just want to have a look at the uh, the data sheet here <coughs> and the electrical characteristics. Uh, you can get this data sheet just by simply searching on the internet, and uh, it's easy to find. And I just want to point out here the voltage, supply voltage. So that the maximum supply voltage is 3.6 volts. 3.3 uh, will be fine for this thing, but the important uh, thing to look at down here is the absolute maximum readings and it says the supply voltage to all pins is maximum 4.25 volts and that's why I've been adamant about making sure you don't connect the pull-up resistors to a 5 volt rail because uh, it will pull them too high and you'll end up with uh, probably damaging your chip here so if you connect the, the pull-up resistors at 3.3 volts then it'll be fine now <clears throat> Let's have a look at the software. So I'm going to use the wire library, which is the I. This is um, um, I'm not sure whose it is. Uh, Maybe the WinAVR compiler's name. Actually, it's Atmel's name for the I squared C bus. I squared C is actually a copyrighted word, so um, a lot of people don't like using it. Although I don't think anybody gets into trouble for using it. Um, so, anyways. Uh, uh, Atmel uses wire. Uh, they actually called it TWI, the two wire interface. And so the library that Arduino has written is called wire. So you have to include that. Um, this is the slave address. Now you remember 
uh, from a previous video that you need the slave address to be able to differentiate which module on the I2C bus you're actually talking to. And so this is the uh, slave address for this sensor. Now it's a calibrated device. Bosch calibrates them before they ship them. And they store calibration data within an EEPROM inside the device. And in order for you to get um, accurate data from it, you read the raw pressure or temperature and then you have to run that uh, data through some calculations using the calibration factors and uh, that'll give you the accurate temperature and pressure. And there's 22 bytes of calibration factors or ca uh, character uh, calibration data and they're organized in 16-bit uh, words but you can only read of course a byte at a time from this device and so I'll show you how I do that, how I read the bytes and how I reassemble them into the integers, the 16-bit integers. And uh, I just defined all the addresses for each of the different uh, calibration registers, but all you need to know is the first um, address for the first register, because they're all continuous. And you can just start at this address and read 22 bytes and you'll get all the calibration data. And I'll show you down in the code how to do it. <coughs> to do a conversion, you have to write um, either this value or that value to this register here. If you want to get a temperature, you write this value. If you want to get a pressure, you, um, you write this value. I declared a time here in milliseconds. It takes time for the, uh, the sensor to do a conversion. Uh, 4.5 milliseconds, I believe, is the longest time it will take. And so uh, uh, 4.5 milliseconds is quite a long time uh, relative to um, what the uh, microcontroller can do. So you have to tell the microcontroller to wait while the, the pressure sensor is doing its conversion. When it's finished a conversion, when, uh, either temperature or pressure, that value, the uh, uh, uncalibrated value, the raw value, gets written into this register and the following four bytes. It's a 32-bit number. And so uh, when you do a conversion, you just read from... Uh, I've given it two definitions here, but it actually is the same register. Um, I have to store this calibration data, so I've declared these integers here. Uh, there's 11 of them to store the calibration data. The raw temperature that you read has to be put somewhere, and so I declare a long, which is 32 bits, or 4 bytes, uh, Bosch UT or un, uh, uncalibrated temperature. Same thing for the pressure. And then um, the calculations are quite extensive. I'll show you how they how they work. And there's a, a number of intermediate registers that are required to do these uh, to do the calculations to get the, the properly calibrated data. So this is all of the memory that I've declared for all of the calculations. Now in the setup routine, the the routine that gets called only once. I'm going to do a couple of things here. First of all, I'm going to uh, set up the serial port so that uh, I can actually see what's going on. I'm going to output the, uh, the the calibrated temperature and pressure to the serial port. So I need to get that going. And then I just write a little sign-on message here just to tell me that it's actually working. I have to start the uh, wire routine. Now, if you remember from my previous video, Arduino has written their code for the wire begin routine to enable the two pull-up resistors on the two uh, clock and data lines. And so uh, immediately after um, starting up the uh, wire um, wire background, wire routines, uh, the wire functions, uh, I send this out to port C uh, with these two bits low, which uh, turns off those two pull-up resistors so that we don't have um, the uh, the clock and data lines being pulled to 5 volts. Now I'm going to read the 22 bytes of calibration data with this bit of code here. So I'm going to tell the wire system to uh, begin transmission. Oops. Um, and this is the slave address. And it's going to start from the EEPROM, uh, the one I showed you up here, the beginning of all the calibration data right here and um, I'm going to get it to read this many bytes which I declared as 22 and the true here tells me tells the uh, wire system to stop transmission 
after it has read all the 22 bytes. Now it takes time to get those bytes and the microcontroller can operate a lot faster than that so we've got to stall the microcontroller and that's what this while loop here it is. While wire dot available is less than the maximum calibration factors which is 22. Um, wire dot available returns the number of bytes that have been received so far every time you call it and so I just continuously call it over and over again and compare it to 22 and if it's less than 22 uh, this will always be true and so this while loop will just keep running here and it'll stall right here until the number of bytes read or available to be read um, equals 22. Now down here is where I read in all of the 22 bytes and then each time I do it I convert them the two bytes into a 16-bit integer here. So here's the first calibration parameter. So I have to look at it twice because I have to do something to it for each byte. So the first byte that I read in is the high order part of the 16-bit number. And the first thing I do is I cast that byte into an int. That's what this bracket int just before this uh, function. Um, it tells the compiler to treat the byte that he that we're working with as an integer instead of a byte. And if you uh, work at it, work with it just as a byte, you might have some funny results. So I convert it to an integer and then I shift it left eight positions. So that moves the, the low byte into the upper byte. And then I put it into this register here. I get the next byte, again I cast it to an int and then I simply add the, uh, without shifting it, to the low order part of this register. And I do it um, for each of the 11 different calibration factors so that I get them all read properly into their um, integer registers in, in, in the memory in this, in this program. This is done in the setup routine, which is only called once after the microcontroller is reset. Um, we don't need to continuously read the calibration data. As long as you've got it stored uh, in your program, you can use it at any time. Now, if we go down into loop here, um, I'm just going to continuously read the temperature and the pressure and convert them doing the math and displaying them on the, uh, the serial monitor. So here I'm going to get the temperature first of all. So I start the transmission with a slave address and we're going to put the uh, start um, conversion um, word into this, this register and then wait for five milliseconds for the uh, the sensor to do its conversion. So here I'm just wasting time for five milliseconds. Um, if you're using this for something else, you could go away and do uh, something else with the microcontroller, uh, and then come back and check that the uh, um, the that the uh, sensor has actually done its conversion. Now uh, I'm going to get the uh, data from the sensor, and again I start the transmission with a slave address and I'm going to read from this register and when you do an end transmission with a false here it um, it restarts the transmission, it does a, uh, um, a re uh, what they call it, a repeated start As I described that in my previous video so then it can start reading from the address uh, from the slave address here, we're going to request from this address, we'll read the data from this address, we're going to get two bytes and true here means that uh, we're going to stop the uh, transmission after two bytes. We're going to wait here until the two bytes have arrived and then we're going to read them and put them into the long register here of the uncalibrated temperature. Now here's the next bit that's kind of interesting. There's some formulas here, the calculations that you have to do in order to convert the uh, raw temperature into the corrected temperature and it uses some of the calibration factors that we just downloaded. Um, this is not something I made up myself. This is uh, math that I copied directly from the data sheet for the sensor. It's important to um, use the the math routines here as they're described in the uh, data sheet, and they have to be um, the temporary registers have to be big enough to hold the results. Some of the results get quite large, and um, for example here I'm putting a constant multiplying this register by a constant well this register Bosch MC is a long and so I'm going to cast this 2048 into a long and that's what this L after it means 
uh, it just tells the compiler to treat this as uh, four bytes long instead of just two. Uh, two. 2048 fits in two bytes. And again, over here, I'm using this division by 16, and I'm telling the compiler to treat it as a long, 32 bytes long. It just in ensures that the math is correct. If you don't do this, sometimes the math doesn't turn out right. And then finally the result with the corrected temperature is stored in this register and then I print it. I put it on the screen. Once I've done that, I do the same thing again. Start the conversion, but this time for the pressure. So I put in this constant to tell the, um, the sensor to start converting the pressure. And again I wait for 5 milliseconds. And then again I read the 2 bytes from the device and I convert them to long. Again, as I explained earlier, into, and I put them in this Bosch UP, which means uncalibrated pressure. Now, the calculations to convert the pressure into the correct, uh, the corrected reading, um, are actually quite extensive here, and they actually involve the previously converted temperature. So you must do the temperature, you must read the temperature first and calculate, do the calculations to get the corrected temperature, because it, the corrected temperature is required in this routine here. And again, um, pay special attention to the size of the variables that you're using or the constants. Again, this 4096, even though it fits in two bytes, I've told the compiler to treat it as a four byte word or a long because all of these calculations here are longs. And uh, I had quite a bit of trouble getting this, um, this uh, complicated math routine to work properly. Uh, even though I copied it directly from the data sheet, it looked exactly uh, like the data sheet. But when I started putting, um, telling the compiler to treat these constants here as longs instead of just single bytes, it made the uh, calculations correct. And when you're done here, after all these calculations are done, you get the corrected pressure and it's stored in Bosch underscore P. And then I print it out on the screen, or uh, on the serial monitor. I wait for 990 milliseconds because I used up 10 milliseconds um, for the two conversions and then I go back to the top after 990 milliseconds and start again. So this loop here, uh, where is it being here? This loop here runs for every second and um, so that's basically it. It's, it's very straightforward. The only complex uh, part of this code here is just getting this math routine to work properly. But like I said, I didn't design this. I just copied it straight off the data sheet. Now, if I bring up the serial monitor here, we have a look at the output from the sensor. And you can see the temperature and the pressure. Now, this uh, temperature here looks kind of weird. It's 209, 210. It's actually in tenths of a degree Celsius. And so it's actually 21.0 right now. Uh, same with the pressure, it's a rather large number. It's output in pascals. And uh, the standard for reporting pr air pressure in Canada is in kilopascals. So this is actually 92.982 kilopascals. Um, the astute of you may have noticed as well that the uh, air pressure here, 92 kilopascals, is pretty low. Um, now, the reason for that is, of course, I'm living at elevation. I'm at about 2,000 feet above sea level. And the official reporting of air pressure, uh, at least in Canada, is um, as if the, temp the pressure was at sea level. So even though I'm at 2,000 feet above sea level, uh, the pressure gets converted down to what it would be if it was at sea level. So our normal air pressure around here is around 100 or so, or 98 kilopascals instead of 92. Um, if I did a conversion here for elevation, I would probably read about 100 kilopascals because I think that's what the uh, current pressure is right now. So anyways, here is um, a very quick look at this uh, sensor. It's very versatile, quite easy to use. It gives you quite accurate readings here. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what other people use, what applications other people would use it for. Um, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry for the uh, long delay since the previous video, but I hope to be putting them out a little more often again. Um, my next one might be on a different kind of a sensor, again on an I squared C bus. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, 
keep watching keep checking in catch you next time bye for now